Welcome to the Andrew Collette Show. I'm gonna try to reach the highest rank in Pokemon Sword with only Dragon type Pokemon. Competitive Pokemon Online has 11 tiers in its ranking system with Master Ball being the highest. Quick summary of the rules at the time of this video. Doubles battles, you bring four of six of your Pokemon. Pokemon from the base game and both DLC are allowed with the exception of restricted legendaries as shown on screen. Full rule set in the description below if you're interested. Now I have mixed feelings about only using Dragons. It's generally a good defensive type with some amazing stats and pseudo legendaries, but they lack support moves like fake out or coveted abilities like prankster. So I'm going to shake things up a bit and I'll explain a little more about each dragon on this team throughout the video. But basically we got two hyper offensive mons, two slow mons, and two walls. You may notice I have no sub legendary dragons. It's not that all of them are bad, but I just think none of them are great for a mono team. Let's see if I'm wrong and get right into it. Starting at the very bottom of beginner rank. The first battle of the grind starts with our hyper offensive combo Dracovish and Dragapult. The bread and butter combo is Dynamaxing Dragapult to max Airstream, giving both of our Mons a speed boost. She's also holding Life Orb to deal 30% more damage in exchange for 10% of her HP each attack. Dracovish's signature move, Fish's Rend, gets double the power if the user attacks before the target. To make sure this happens as much as possible, I equipped Dracovish with a Choice Scarf, boosting its speed by 50%, but only allows the first move selected. After dodging Zapdos's Thunder, another combo is shown with Dragapult using Max Phantasm, not only knocking out Zapdos, but dropping Tyranitar's defense, giving Dracovish another easy KO. The first combo is executed again against Landorus, winning our first game in this challenge. For game two, it's time to highlight our slow, bulky Trick Room duo. On the first turn, their Garchomp Dynamaxes as well as our Dragology. Tornadus doubles their speed with a pointless Tailwind since both of them are already way faster than us. Garchomp slaps hard with Max Wormwind, but not hard enough. That activates Dragology's weakness policy, which when hit by a super effective move, his special attack is doubled. Answering with our own Max Wormwind, but actually getting the KO. They essentially experience a GameStop trade. Executor further discredits their Tailwind by setting up Trick Room, allowing slower Pokemon to move first for 5 turns. Tornadus still does go first since its Prankster ability gives higher priority status to moves like Swagger, which misses. Then Coconut Head puts the Flying Legendary to sleep with some Sleep Powder, while Dragology lands another knockout with Max Lightning. Let's see how much Woodhammer does. Not much, but Dragology yet again blows away another dragon on their team with Max Wormwind. Let's try Woodhammer again. Okay, you've had your fun, Palm Tree. Let's seal the game with a Thunderbolt. Two wins in a row bring us up into Tier 2. Game 3 is kind of a funny situation. It's a different player, yet the same team. So why not lead the same Pokemon? Same strategy too. Grimmsnarl fakes out Dragology, which does not flinch Dynamax to Mons. Celesteela does give a scare with Air Slash, which could flinch. Dragology Max uses Grimmsnarl back, bringing them down to 1 HP per their Focus Sash, while we receive a special attack boost. Executor is not flinched and brings in the Trick Room. Like the Tornadus from the last game, Grim's Prankster ability gives its fake tears, move priority, and cuts Dragology's special defense in half. Now here comes this duo's combo. Executor bulldozes everyone, which slows down everyone's speed, but the important part is that it procs Dragology's weakness policy, powering him up, and it also snuffed Grimmsnarl. With its new power, Max Lightning takes out Celesteela with one hit. Now these two look familiar, but things happen differently this time with Tornadus actually landing the Swagger this time, confusing Dragology and hitting itself in confusion. At least Executor is able to Sleep Powder Tornadus, but Dragology is left wide open to a Mighty Max Wormwind from Reggie Drago and doesn't survive. I actually could lose now, but I need to do my best to stall their Dynamax turns. Salamence protects, helping her live the Dynamax attack, and I end the turn with Trick Room to undo the one from earlier since Salamence is a fast Mon. But I just made things worse since Tornadus woke up and used Tailwind, making me wish I didn't nullify the Trick Room. This leads to Salamence's demise, but at least they didn't attack Executor, who brings back the Trick Room. Sleep Powder Tornadus, then Draco Media. Oh no. Gudra freaking missed! Gudra threw the game! We literally could have won that if that didn't happen. The only reason Gudra lived was his held item Assault Vest, increased his special defense by 50%, with the drawback of only using damaging attacks. In the end, it wasn't enough first loss in this challenge. Because the foe has Torkoal, which can double Venusaur speed, I opt for the Trick Room tactics again. But this is a bad player. They used Growth. I mean, come on, dude. With Trick Room up, Dragology Dynamax is getting hit first by Torkoal's Earth Power and our Bulldoze. Then dumps a Max Ooze on Torkoal. Executor survives their Max Ooze thanks to Focus Sash, which if hit by an attack that would knock it out, 
This item prevents the holder from fainting and keeps it at 1 HP. Turn 3 is a doozy since Venusaur blocks our attack with max guard, and we also miss a sleep powder resulting in Zapdos knocking down the coconut tree. Turn 4 is better since Venusaur is left unguarded and one hit KO'd. Zapdos does decent damage with a stomping tantrum, and Dracovish ends with Psychic Fangs. With the momentum on our side, they forfeit entering us into rank 3. The next team has no Pokemon that can outspeed Dragapult. So hyper offense it is. However, I do switch out Dracovish for Gudra since both of them are special attackers. And it's good too because their Gastrodon came in as well, which could have absorbed my water attacks with Storm Drain. Indeed, he protects, causing my airstream to do minimal damage. We team up against Gastrodon with a Wormwind and an Ice Beam, sending the slug back to its ocean. Indeed, he pulls out an expanding force, but it's nothing scary. Neolego is back in Dynamax form and is protected with Indeed's Follow Me, forcing my airstream to aim at her. The unfortunate part is Gudra's muddy water can still hit both of them, but misses the Neolego. Dragapult is then knocked out by a Max Starfall, and since it was a KO, Neolego's Beast Boost ability raises their special attack. Salamence fills the vacancy immediately, protecting while Gudra's Muddy Water misses Neolego again. You only get one more chance, buddy, because you barely survived that Starfall. Third time's the charm with Muddy Water, finally smacking both of them, knocking out Ndidi in the process. Salamence's fate is cut short as well from the Max Starfall, giving them another special attack boost. It's obvious I want Neolego gone, so they protect blocking Ficious Rend, while Urshifu slays Gudra with a Sucker Punch. We knock out Neolego the next turn, but it's not enough against the Urshifu, holding a Focus Sash, losing us the game. Our rank is still low enough where we don't lose progress when defeated. All of our six opponents' Pokemon are special attackers, so Gudra is dying to lead with Dynamax. Immediately off to a great start, knocking out their Torkoal with just one Max Wormwind. Gudra is so thick, barely taking any damage from Gastrodon's Earth Power, and is squashed by a four times super effective Woodhammer. Massive recoil, though. Charizard and Whimsicott are their last two Mons, setting up a pointless Tailwind and then KOing Exeggutor with a max airstream. To weaken Charizard's power, Gudra max geysers to not only do damage, but to replace the sun with the rain, which is home to Dracovish. They continue to underestimate Gudra's bulk, but they almost wipe out Draco with a Moonblast. He responds with Ficious Rent, almost KOing as well. Then Gudra puts out Charizard's flames. Our foe then forfeits. Just need to win the next one to rank up. The Ice Horse Glacier is super scary for our team. Dragon is weak to ice, and two of my mons are four times weak to it. Wanting to nerf it, I attack with Dragapult, dropping their attack stat, and Sleep Powder with Exeggutor. Unfortunately, it used Protect, making our efforts futile while Dusclops sets up the Trick Room for their Slow Horse. They Dynamax Glacier and Ally Switch, but I don't care since I Max Guard blocking the Ice Attack along with undoing the Trick Room. Wanting to set up Trick Room again, Glacier Max Guards blocking Dragapult, but this time Exeggutor lands the Sleep Powder, wasting their attempt. I swap in Salamence, who has the Intimidate ability, lowering their attack stats some more. Doesn't matter though, since Exeggutor misses their second Sleep Powder this match, then gets slammed by Max Hailstorm, down to its Focus Sash at 1 HP. And there's the Trick Room again. Hail then faints our tree. Gudra comes in frightened because even though it has special bulk, its physical sign, eh, not so much. But Glacier is switched in for Ndidi. Salamence blocks the Will-O-Wisp. Then Gudra, of course, misses Dusclops with muddy water, only hurting Ndidi. Dusclops is then withdrawn for Glacier. Perfect. Why? We attacked with muddy water and heat wave. Sure, expanding force hurt us, but their horse is withering. The next turn is just them protecting for some reason, which I don't get because Trick Room is going to expire soon. The final Trick Room turn doesn't go great with Dusclops coming back and Salamence protecting for nothing since Gudra was killed by Icicle Crash, boosting their attack stat per their Chilling Nay ability when landing a KO. Okay, I know what they're doing. Yup, there's the Protect, Dragapult dips into the Shadow Realm, then Salamence hopes for an Air Slash miss, which doesn't happen. With Trick Room up again and Dusclops ally switching, taking the Phantom Force for its buddy, Glacier is too much to handle, and Garchomp finishes off Salamence. So right now our record is 4 wins, 3 losses. That's not that great. I mean, it could be fine for the higher ranks, but where I'm at now, it's kind of lackluster. I tried 8 more matches with this team, eventually making it to rank 5, but I realized who the deadweight was on the team, Salamence. It's really not a terrible Pokemon, but on a Mono Dragon team, its role as a defensive wall wasn't working. So after some thinking, Salamence is cut and Turtonator is drafted to the team. Turtonator completes the Grass Fire Water Core, has a high defense stat, and is a fire type which could help us wall the types that are tougher dragons like Fairy and Ice. Let's see how he does. After one more win, Turtonator is selected 
in game 17. First, it's a typical Dragology Executor lead where Exodro does Swords Dance while we max ooze the Clefairy and set up Trick Room. Tyrantar comes in, Exodro Dynamaxes, which is put to sleep. We max Wormwind to weaken their attack, which proves faithful from the Rock Slide. They decide to swap in Primariner for Titar's place, which just gets annihilated by Executor's Wood Hammer. Another Wormwind brings Exodro back to their normal attack stat. However, that's not enough to stop their Max Quake from wiping out Dragology. It's turtle time. We attempt a Body Press, a fighting type attack that uses our defense stat rather than our attack stat. But it's blocked and Excadro is put back to sleep. And because that mole is the bigger threat, Turtonator slams them to zero HP with Body Press and Wood Hammer seals us the game. That win grants us access into rank 6. One more change I'm going to make with this team is replacing Executor's Wood Hammer with Leaf Storm. They're both strong attacks. But since Strigology raises our special attack a lot with Max Ooze next to Executor, Leaf Storm seems to have more potential. Gujra also got two of its moves replaced, Ice Beam and Muddy Water. They weren't being used as much, so now we're trying out Thunderbolt, which you all know what that is, and Faint, an attack that pretty much breaks the opponent's Protect, which can give Gujra's partner an opening to attack. Anyways, this current match is Turtonator setting up with Iron Defense to raise the power of Body Press. GG, if we win the next one, we'll enter rank 7. Dracovish comeback? It's just Torkoal left. Nope, doesn't look like it. Game 20, Dragapult assists Dracovish with max airstream so Dracovish can attack first, getting KO after KO after KO, and after, uh, they forfeit. No fourth KO. Game 21 is another rank 7 qualifier, and our Trick Room duo handles it super well, calling the Protects on their attacks, setting up Trick Room, Dragology sweeping, Executor putting them to sleep, and they eventually forfeit. Game 22 is pretty much the Dragology Executor Trick Room strategy you've all seen by now. Truthfully, this strategy is used a lot in this run, and works so well because players aren't used to seeing Alolan Executor, so they don't know what to expect. Then POW! They get owned. Winning the game brings us to the edge near rank 8. And of course, we initially go for the Trick Room strategy, but it's not typical per Executor getting flinched from Incineroar's Fake Out. Since Dragology already used Protect the first turn, I switch him out for Turtonator, who doesn't even lose half of his HP from the Icicle Crash. Instant attacks with Flare Blitz, but it's not enough to stop Trick Room. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Turtonator's held item is Leftovers, healing 1 16th of his life points each turn. The Phobe makes a great switch, bringing in Amoongus, who is not affected by Executor Sleep Powder. After Turt doubles his defense, Incineroar burns the tree with another Blitz. Amoongus is big trouble here, being the slowest Mon, especially with the Trick Room present, putting Dragology to sleep. Our Fire Turtle traps their Mushroom in a Fire Spin, hoping to knock it out eventually. Incineroar says Sayonara with Parting Shot, swapping places with Darmanitan. Amoongus continues to menace us with Spore, but thankfully, Dragology already wakes up and decimates Amoongus while Darm Ice attacks, activating weakness policy. Amoongus passes out from the Fire Spin residual damage. Their fourth Mon is revealed being Moltres, and they swap back Incineroar, which could have been KO'd if Turtonator was not asleep. Max Lightning is blocked by Max Guard. With Dragology being normal size now, he protects blocking Fake Out and tanking their Max Airstream. Turtonator wakes up this time and smashes Incineroar to zero. I have to go for a double protect with Dragology being dead meat, but it fails. Oh wait! Icicle Crash misses too! And Turtonator lives in Max Darkness, which responds with Body Press, Okoing Darmanitan! But even though it's 3 versus 1, Moltres got a speed boost from an earlier Max Airstream, so they exile both of us with a Fiery Wrath. Our Choice Scarf Dracovish isn't fast enough either, and is defeated. Game 24 is literally an Executor Dragology sweep. Once those two fairies showed their faces, Dragology just laughed, then finished off their two backseat friends. Alright, another chance to enter rank 8. Looks like they let me get the Trick Room up, and Dragology made all four of them regret it. Welcome to rank 8, dragons. Game 26, Duraludon takes the bait, attacking Dragology, who used Protect. Unlocking Super Saiyan mode, to which Dragology strikes back, taking care of Tapu Koko and Duraludon. He doesn't sweep the whole team, but Turtonator owns the rest of the team, with its high defense, taking its time with a couple iron defenses, then body pressing Zapdos and Lycanroc. 
Winning three games in a row escalates the boost we get for each win, meaning we're already almost at rank 9. On to game 27, aka game 7 in a row, going for the immediate trick room. I Dynamax Dragalge to attack Comfy, but it swaps out for Tyrantar, which you must be holding an Assault Vest because it took hardly any damage after my Lodic helped us get the weakness policy boost from Ice Beam. Trick Room twists the dimensions. My Lodic switches out this time, Executor misses Sleep Powder, Comfy goes bye-bye for Max Lightning, and Dynamax Titar hits hard with Max Quake, already wiping our Sweeper. But I got Turnator, which I gotta say has been a real big help for this team. After an Iron Defense, physical attackers have such a rough time cracking him, and his Shell Armor ability doesn't allow critical hits. My Lodic was their only chance to counter, but Leaf Storm took care of her. Look at that! A super effective Max Quake from a Dynamax Tyrantor didn't even bring us down to 50%. Body Press crushes their Lapras, scaring them enough to forfeit the next turn. Made it to rank 9, only 2 more to go. Game 28, aka Game 8 in a row of these shenanigans, and they let Dragalge walk all over them. Game 29, we face a popular yet effective lead, Regigigas and Weezing's Neutralizing Gas, which negates all abilities while on the field, including Reggie's slow start, making it a powerhouse. I have Dragapult target the Weezing, because once it's gone, Reggie's a piece of cake. But the Protect lowers the damage they take, Dracovish vicious rends, and Regigigas almost max hailstorms Draco to death. Since the max strike slowed us down, Reggie goes first this time with max hailstorm. Then I bring our speed back to normal with Max Airstream, so Dracovish can swipe away the Weezing, reinstating their slow start ability. Ditto appears, immediately transforming into our Dracovish, since their imposter ability transforms upon switching. Now there are two Jethead fish on the field. Knowing their Ditto speed and moves, Dragapult one shots with the Max Wormwind, our Dracovish doesn't quite get the kill, meaning our Ghost Dragon's time is done from the Ice Attack. Wow, you don't see battles very often with three Dracovishes. After kicking out Regigigas and surviving the Leech Life, the opponent Rage quits by disconnecting. In game 30, our Trick Room Setter is stopped by a Max Phantasm and Expanding Force. At least the weakness policy was triggered in the process and gets revenge right back into Spectrier. But with them having the speed advantage, a Fairy type, and a Psychic type, Dragalge is doomed and Gudra follows him to the grave soon after. Turnator himself is cornered, rendered defenseless as well. Game 31 turns out a lot better with the Trick Room strategy being set into motion, establishing Dragalge as the dominant Pokemon against Faramosa, Torkoal, and Whimsicott. Then the Backseaters, Turtonator and Gudra, bullied their Gigantamax Lapras into a forfeit. Our 30 second foe is the gatekeeper to the Ultra Ball tier rank 10. And I put on the pressure immediately with Ghost and Fish Dragons, scaring their Salamence to tag in Moltres, which gets obliterated by Dragapult, and their Tapu Lele dies. Oh, it doesn't. That's gotta be one bulky Eevee trained Tapu. No worries, because while Salamence guards, Gujar finishes the Tapu Lele. Looks like there wasn't much speed training since it was so defensive. This time, Dragapult does knock out their pseudo legendary and their second pseudo legendary with a Phantom Force. Ever since Turtonator joined the team, our record has been 14 wins and 3 losses. That's insane for a monotype team. And now we're only one more rank away from our goal. First match in Ultra Ball, it's Trick Room Setter versus Trick Room Setter. I'm surprised this hasn't happened until now. Their Grim Snarl starts off by placing a Light Screen, cutting in half the damage from our special attacks. Thankfully, even though our Max Ooze does doesn't KO, it does increase our special attack. Then their Porygon 2 and our Executor both use Trick Room, cancelling it out. That was likely done on purpose since ours was pretty predictable. But now I'm not sure because they taunt Executor which means it can't use non-damaging moves. Dragalge oozes the Porygon, but not sure how smart that was. Executor can't use Sleep Powder, then they set up Trick Room, so I guess they wanted it? I'll take it though while they bring in Marowak. So my Bulldoze Weakness Policy Strat goes into action, eradicating their Marowak. The turn ends with Grim Snarl Spirit Breaking Executor. Tapu Fini is next and Dynamaxes. Dragalge dumps on Grim Snarl to death with a Sludge Bomb. Executor Leaf Storms their Fini, and Dragalge survives the Max Hailstorm. Now here's where I make a mistake. I double into Porygon 2, which not only survives, but then heals with the Recover. I should have tried to take down the Fini since my Turtonator in the back could have handled Porygon 2. With Dragalge gone, I have no choice but to focus on Tapu Fini, since the rest of the team struggles against it. After withstanding their last Dynamax turn, Turtonator is knocked out the next turn by a Moonblast and Tri-Attack, erasing an answer for Porygon 2. Dracovish and our Egghead eventually take down Porygon, but the Tapu Fini's Moonblast are too much for our remaining two. First battle in Ultra Ball was a loss, but let's shake it off. Whoa, what a weird team. It's a rain and hail team? Let's see what they go with. All right, Sand Slash is here. It's pretty easy to predict a Vanillix switch in. And would you look at that? Vanillix's ability brings in the hail, which triggers Sand Slash's ability, doubling its speed in the hail. But I saw this coming, and when you switch, you only get one attack. Dragalge protected against the max hailstorm, receiving the special attack boost, while Executor brings in the Trick Room. This battle should be easy if Sleep Powder doesn't miss. Yes! 
While the giant frozen mouse sleeps, Dragalji wormwinds the ice cream, strikes the Lapras with lightning, and decimates Sandslash with Wormwind. Our Draco Meteor missed, allowing Kingdra to get revenge for its friends, but their hopes are crushed when Gujar lands its own Draco Meteor. Game 25 all depends on who the opponent brings. Ah shoot, it's Entei and Landorus. They can stop our Trick Room. But lucky me, Sacred Fire misses, and our tree is only hit by Earthquake. Trick Room is here to stay, and Dragalji stomps all over another player. Landorus goes bye-bye, Gigantamax Urshifu doesn't have a chance either, and they just end up quitting the match, giving us the win. We just need one more win to complete the challenge. And I don't know whether I hate it or love it, but seeing their team, we gotta go with the classic duo again. Our opponent plays right into our hands. The Whimsicott blows in the Tailwind, which all render useless. Duralidon Dragon Pulses, doubling Dragalji's power. Dragalji Max uses, bringing Whims down to their Focus Sash, and there's the final Trick Room. Executor gets the kill on the Whim, with Bulldoze while Dragalji continues the streak, worm winning Duralidon. Grimmsnarl and Tyranitar could be the final two Pokemon we face off against. Dragalji drowns Grimmsnarl with all of that ooze to 0 HP, and Executor lullabies the Tyranitar to sleep with its powder. With everything going perfect for us and no hope for them, they cancel the rest of the battle, graduating my dragons into the Master Ball tier, the highest rank for online competitive. Well, that was really fun. Definitely had a rough start, and Turnator was not only a better defensive tank, but a massive good luck charm after joining the team. Typically, when a new season starts, the rank brings you down to the Great Ball tier at rank 8. To get back to the bottom, I have to create a whole new account, play the beginning of the game. It's kind of annoying. Would you all be down if I just started at rank 8 next season? Then I wouldn't have to skim over the battles as much, and I would only cover the high-level matches, generally speaking. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully, you enjoyed it enough to subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to like the video if you want more competitive content, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.